just and a warm welcome to our host panel as well and i would like to invite our uh, the president of apt professor k matthew sir to welcome welcome gathering over to titus sir okay thank you thank you rashmi uh, respected sebastian sir uh warrior sir uh anini sir ಮತ್ತ ಅಧ್ಯಾಪಕ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠರೆ ಎ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಭಾರವಾಹಿಗಳೇ ಇನ್ನು ಈ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಚೆಯ್ಯಾ ನಮ್ಮೂಡ ಕೂಡಿರಿಕ್ಕ ಮತ್ತ ಮಾನ್ಯ ಅಧ್ಯಾಪಕರು ಎಲ್ಲರ್ಕ್ಕೂ ನಾನು ಆದ್ಯಮೇ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಪರಯಾಣ ಸಬಾಸ್ಟಿನ್ ಸರ್ ಆಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಇನ್ನತ್ತೆ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ತರದ ಸರ್ನೆ ಕುರಿತು ಶರಿಕ್ಕೂ ಒಂದು ಪರಯಾನು ಪಕ್ಷೇ ಞಾನ್ ವಳರೆ ಒಂದ್ ರೆಂಡು ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಎಡ್ತು ಞಾನ್ ಅವಸಾನಿಪ್ಪಿಕ್ಕ ವಿಚಾರಿಕೂ ಒರುಪಕ್ಷೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾಲಘಟ್ಟ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಲಯಾಳಿಗಳ್ಕ್ ಓಡಾ ಪಟ್ಟ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಮಹಾನಾಯ ಅಧ್ಯಾಪಕನ ಸರ್ನ ಒಂದು ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಞಾನು ಕೇಟ್ಟಿಟ್ಟು ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ಮನೋಹರಮಾಯ ಒಂದು ಕಥ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡ ಪೋಲೆ ಎನಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಚೆಯ್ತಿಟ್ಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸಿಲೇಕ್ಕ ಅದು ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಳರೆ ಲಲಿತಮಾಯು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಡತಿ ವಿಡಾನು ಸಾರಿನ ಕಳಿವು ವಳರೆ ಅಪಾರಮ ಪಲ್ಪೂ ಎನಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಚೆಯ್ತಿಟ್ಟು ಅದ ಒಂದು ಪಕ್ಷೇ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಕಳಿಯುಬೋ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯತೋಡು ಒಟ್ಟು ಮಿಕ್ಕವರು ಯೋಜಿಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಎನಿಕ್ ಉರಪ್ಪಾನ ಅಪ್ಪ ನಮಕ್ಕೆ ಕಿಟ್ಟಿರಿಕ್ಕ ಈ ಒಂದು ಅಸುಲಭ ಸಂದರ್ಭಂ ನಮಕ್ಕೆ ವೇಂಡ ತರ ವಿನಿಯೋಗಿಕ ವರನಾಳುಗಳು ಸಾರಿನ ಸೇವನ ನಮಕ್ಕೆ ಲಭಿಕ್ಕುವನ್ನ ನಾನು ವಿಶ್ವಸಿಕ್ಕು ಸಾರ್ ಇಪ್ಪ ಪಾಲಕ್ಕಾಡ್ ಕೊಚ್ಚಿಲೇಕ್ಕೆ ವರುಂದ ಆ ಒಂದು ಸಂದರ್ಭಂ ಞಾನು ಕೊಚ್ಚಿ ಕೊಚ್ಚಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿಯ ಸಂಬಂಧಿಡತೋಳ ವಳರೆ ಸಂತೋಷಕರವಾನ ಎಂಗೇ ಸಾರಿನೆ ನಮಕ್ಕೂಡ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನಕರಮಾಯಿಟ್ಟು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಕ್ಕ ಪಟ್ಟು ಎಂದು ಞಾನು ಆಲೋಚಿಕೆಯಾಣ ಸಾರಿನ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಆಯಿಟ್ಟು ಕೊಚ್ಚಿಲೇಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಎಂತಾಲು ಎ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಯ ಎಲ್ಲರುಡೆ ಪೇರಲು ಕೂಡಿರಿಕ್ಕ ಎಲ್ಲರುಡೆ ಪೇರಲು ಸಾರಿನ ಞಾನು ಹಾರ್ದವಾಗಿ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಚೆಯ್ಯಾಣ ಓವರ್ ಟು ರಶ್ಮಿ 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 ಓಕೆ ನೀ ಹರೀಶ್ ನೀ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಓವರ್ ಆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಅಮ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಕೆ ಎಲ್ ಸೆಬಾಸ್ಟಿಯನ್ ಸರ್ ಅ ಕಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ಎ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಬಯೋಗ್ರಫಿ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು एवरीवन ಅ ಕಿ is an alum he was is an alumnus of calicut university chemistry department uh, he did msc from calicut university chemistry department then phd was from iisc bangalore uh, he was a faculty at calicut university department uh, from 1976 to 1984 then uh, faculty at kusat department kochi university department from 1984 to 1996 then from 1996 to 2016 he was professor at iisc bangalore from january 2017 onwards uh, he has been professor he has been professor and uh, dean of research and development at iit palakkad uh, he has been chairman of science education panel of uh, the national science academies uh, he was vice president of indian academy of sciences during 2016 18 and uh, he was editor of resonance uh, for two years during 2012-14 and uh, he was also mem- he, is, he has been member of uh, edit- the med- editorial board of national and international journals he is an elected fellow of indian academy of sciences and also indian national science academy and professor k l sebastian uh, is the recipient of many uh, prestigious national awards uh, the most noted of them are SS Patnagar Prize in Chemical Sciences in 1995, Sodeshi Shastra Puraskar in 1996, and uh, he was also J.C. Bose Fellow for 10 years uh, from 2008 to 2018. And in addition to these, uh, he has been recipient of many more honors in different uh, universities and national level institutes. Uh, Professor Sebastian's uh, research areas are quantum chemistry and statistical mechanics. 
and uh, he's uh, as uh, titus sir just mentioned he's a highly respected and loved teacher of um, chemistry uh, quantum chemistry and many areas in in quantum chemistry and uh, with the permission of all of us here uh, i would like to welcome professor kl sebastian to deliver today's uh, speech strange and beautiful world of quantum mechanics i think this is one of the topics very close to his heart welcome you sir um sebastian sir sir mute on sir sir the mic mute on i usually have the habit of muting the mic okay, okay sorry sir. i i would like to first of all thank the organizers particularly professor titus professor hari krishnan and there must be other uh, people involved in the organization like rashmi i do not know who she is because i have not met her but anyway i would like to thank all the organizers and of course all of you who are here to listen to me uh i do have a problem the problem is actually usually the the material that i have put in it, it requires probably two hours to cover so i will try to cover whatever i have in the slides but i am not completely sure let me see so now let me start my powerpoint presentation okay i hope the screen is visible now uh and i hope you can see my powerpoint presentation yes sir okay so in case of any problem any non visibility of the screen please let me know also if i cannot be heard then please let me know okay let me start by wishing you all a very good evening uh the title is actually the strange and beautiful world of quantum mechanics uh i mean i would like to thank the physics association of physics teachers for this invitation once again okay i mean i now i'm currently at iit palakkad so it is only appropriate that i thank the iit palakkad for its hospitality uh this is a view of the institute the photographs were taken some time ago that means it's more than a year and it is making so much progress that the appearance would would be different now but anyway uh, this is the main building this is an aerial view of the buildings this also is an aerial view but there is so much construction activity happening even now we are constructing even the, during this covid time so this is very quickly and it is a very nice campus uh, surprisingly we have no water problem which is <laughs> not what i had expected when i i came here uh okay now i let me come to the topic the strange and beautiful world of quantum mechanics you see i a lecture usually to chemists and chemistry students are actually not at all happy with uh, with quantum mechanics and that is the reason why i had to make the lectures extremely simple uh so the thing is usually for a chemistry student that i mean i suppose this might be true for many physics students as well it is a very frightening subject something like this picture which which the people who are old enough among you would recognize this is actually dracula count dracula the original vampire uh but what i would like to tell you is that you see this is a subject that is extremely nice extremely beautiful uh so this is my own opinion and opinion of several others 
it is very very beautiful and in fact what you should do is i mean you shouldn't worry about if you have difficulties then what you should do is you shouldn't really worry too much about the mathematics the mathematics of course is important but uh, think of the physics once you understand the physical concepts the subject will become very beautiful and then the mathematics will become easy so uh, it is just beautiful like uh, the next picture that you are going to see uh, uh but then of course you see uh, when i showed this to uh, to my students at the indian institute of science uh, after the lecture one of them came and told me well sir your knowledge of films is completely outdated so then i realized the reason for that and so i had to update my slides and this is the update that i did so uh, the as i said the, the important thing is you should understand the problem the physics of it and then things become very interesting and nice and then the mathematics is not so difficult so what i am going to do is i am going to outline this question why wave or particle you see fundamental microscopic things they have a dual nature they have the properties of a wave they also have the properties of a particle which means that they can behave like a wave and at the same time they behave like a particle and i shall demonstrate this using the two slit experiments uh, i shall not spend time on the uncertainty principle because i will run out of time but i shall after describing this wave particle duality i will straight away go to what are known as standing waves and those will actually lead me to stationary states and stationary states you see they are very interesting because the thing that is most important in atomic physics namely atomic orbitals is a direct consequence of what are known as they are examples of what are known as stationary states and then of course i do have this interesting question do we understand quantum mechanics and i hope to end with a topic that is one of my most favorite topics i have used it often in my research that is the idea of a path integral i know path integrals is actually considered to be the one of the toughest things uh but i hope i shall give you a physical idea of this and and also demonstrate to you its connection with random walks so two slit experiments i mean the what are these two two slit experiments i also should tell you that whatever i am telling you is actually essentially material at least the first part is essentially material from the feynman lectures uh, which describes these things very beautifully so imagine you have two slits and as you can see here i hope the my mouse is visible so you have uh, two slits and there is a backstop titus could you answer the mouse is visible right yes sir okay so you have two slits and you have something a wall here which is referred to as a backstop and you have a source of bullets will be Uh, which is just a gun and uh, just to make things interesting i shall assume that the person the, the person who is shooting out is uh, drunk and therefore he shoots out things in random directions so that he, so therefore what will happen is that bullets are coming out randomly and this is only a thought experiment nobody who is sensible will ever do this experiment so what will happen is that you see some of the bullets will pass through these two slits and will be hitting the brick wall which is behind and after he has done that we as scientists what do we do we go and uh, look at the pattern and then arrive at inferences so let us imagine that we do this experiment with only one slit open okay there he is shooting out the bullets uh, the the picture actually is taken from that website which i don't think exists anymore so here he is uh, shooting out the bullets and imagine that i keep only slit number 1 open only this slit is open the other slit is closed and then what will happen is that you see most of the bullets will simply directly go there and be hitting there but of course in some cases bullets may bounce off from an edge somewhere here and may go end up so getting there or maybe getting there so therefore if you plotted 
the intensity distribution of the marks left by the bullets on the backstop. So what I'm doing is after he has shot out the bullets, I shall go and examine how, where are the marks and then make an intensity distribution plot for bullets. And what you will find is that there is a maximum somewhere here. And as you go away from there, you will find that the intensity actually decreases. And this intensity distribution, uh, we will refer to as I1. I can repeat the experiment this time, keeping only slit number two open. And then you get this intensity distribution, which is I2. And then if, suppose I keep both the slits open, then you can ask the question, what is the intensity distribution that you would expect? And of course, the answer is simple. It will be obtained by simply adding the two together, this I1 and I2. So therefore, this is what we are going to get. And this intensity distribution, I shall refer to as I12. Okay, I12 because I have kept both the slits open. Now, so therefore, you see, as far as bullets are concerned, all that we need to do is intensities can be added together and you will get the result when both the slits are open. So I1 plus I2 is actually I12. There is one more property that is uh, important. Uh, the, that property is referred to as lumpiness because you see, we will uh, assume that the bullets do not break up, right? They are very strong and therefore they don't break up. So therefore, whenever you detect a bullet, you see, you will find that either it is one bullet or no bullet. So for example, in an experiment, you may find a thousand and one bullets. The next possibility is only 1,002, and there is nothing in between. You don't get 0.5 bullets. And that property is referred to as lumpiness. This is essentially a property of particles. So therefore, you see, behavior of bullets is very, very easy to understand. Now, suppose you do the same experiment, same kind of experiment with waves. Uh, OK, one second. I'll go to the next slide and come back. So essentially the idea is actually we have two slits. Okay, we have two slits and we have uh, waves passing through these two slits. There is an animation here, okay. So here in this animation, what you are going to see is once I play it, waves will be coming from the left hand side and hitting a wall, which is here with the wall itself. I have not drawn because I generated this animation. The wave actually will hit this wall and will be reflected. Even that I have not seen then because the, the, uh, the appearance looks complex. So therefore, but the, there is a slight, there is a, an opening, there is a slit there where I have marked as one and wave, part of the wave will pass through the slit and will be going out on the other side. So that is what you will see. So therefore you see this is simplified because of the animation I wanted it to be clear. We have a steady wave coming from the left hand side and then part of it is passing through slit number one and going to the other side. And you, you can think of the intensity of the wave. You see you can have a detector which places the which is placed in different locations here along this line. And then what will you find? You will find that the intensity actually decreases as a function of position along this line. Okay. And in fact, what is intensity as far as waves are concerned? Well, the intensity is definitely proportional to, you can get a crude idea of the intensity by taking the displacement of the surface of water and taking its square. That is something that is proportional to the intensity. And in fact, what we will do is we will say for the sake of convenience, we will call denote this displacement by psi one and I will be proportional to psi one square. Uh, why is psi one you may ask? Well, because I want to use the same symbol from quantum mechanics. Now you can do this is with water waves, but the same kind of ideas are valid with electromagnetic waves also. So now suppose you keep both the slits open. Sorry, not both the slits, only slit number two open. Here you have an animation with only slit number two open. And then what will happen again, the same kind of thing. You don't need to be a, an expert to say what will happen. You will get an intensity distribution, which will be similar to the previous case. 
And if you wanted to calculate that, uh, you will again take psi2 square. And what is psi2? Psi2 is actually uh, the displacement of the water surface at a particular point. Now with this, let me go back to the first slide that you, we saw, this one. So this is the intensity distribution in the case where I keep only slit number one open, I1. And this is the intensity distribution when I keep only slit number two open. And the question is actually, what is the intensity distribution in the case where you keep both the slits open? In the case of bullets, actually, it is obviously I1 plus I2, but that is not what happens in the case of waves. In the case of waves, what happens is that you don't get this as the intensity distribution. This would be the intensity distribution in the case of bullets, but uh, in the case of um, uh, waves, this is not, okay, I'm, unfortunately, I'm back to the slides on bullets. Let me go proceed further. Okay, here it is. here is what I should have come back to. Okay, so this is the slide that you, I should have shown you. Uh, with waves, what happens is that if you keep only slit number one open, you will get I1. If you kept only slit number two open, you get I2. And if you kept uh, both the slits open, you get an interference pattern. And in fact, there is an animation that I would like to show you. So this is the animation. In fact, I have not shown the incident wave. There are two slits that are open, uh, one and two, and the waves, uh, the waves which pass through these two slits, they interfere. So in some regions, they interfere constructively. For example, here they interfere constructively, while at this point they interfere destructively. And therefore, if you put a detector along this line, what happens is that you get an intensity distribution there. There is a maximum intensity, so therefore you get a maximum at that point a minimum somewhere here, which is roughly corresponds to that, and then another maximum and so on. So this is what you observe in the case of waves. So waves exhibit interference. And the other thing is, you see, in the case of bullets, we saw that they have the property of lumpiness, and with water waves, you see, there is nothing that is lumpy. If you wanted to increase the intensity of the waves, see, imagine, suppose I measure the intensity and in the units appropriate for intensity, let me say, I get an intensity of 1.3. Then I can actually vary the intensity of the source vary by a very small amount. And then this 1.3 can be made 1.301. So intensity can be varied in a smooth and continuous fashion, and there is nothing that is lumpy about waves. And in fact, if you wanted to calculate I12, I12 is the intensity distribution in the case where both the slits are open. What should you do? The answer is that you have to calculate the displacement when both the slits are open. See, for example, if you want to calculate the density at this point, you have to calculate the displacement at that point and then take its magnitude and square it. That will give you the intensity. But then how will you calculate this displacement psi 1, 2? The answer is that you see at this point, uh, the, there is displacement caused by two sets of waves. Waves which are passed through slit number 1, they will be arriving there. They will cause a displacement of psi 1. And the waves which are passed through slit number 2, they at, will arrive the same at the same location that will cause a displacement, which we have called psi 2. And therefore, if you wanted to get the total displacement, what, what should you do? Total displacement will be the sum of this psi 1 and psi 2. Correct? So therefore, if you wanted to calculate the displacement, it is very simple. You just have to add the two displacements and you will get the total displacement. And once you get the total displacement, you can take its square and you will get the, the intensity. But displacement has the property. You see, it may be in the upward direction or I can say it may be positive or it may be in the downward direction. So therefore, it may be negative. So therefore, the psi1 and psi2, you see, they are not uh, positive numbers. They can be positive or negative, And therefore, 
uh, what might what would happen is that you see psi one can be positive and psi two can be negative. In which case the two can actually cancel, tend to cancel each other. So that is how you get interference. So now let us imagine that we do exactly the same experiment with the electrons. And interestingly, the same kind of experiment was done with electrons in, well, the experiment that I know of is actually done in 1983 or 84, but there have been other experiments done earlier also. I think in fact, through three or four experiments uh, were done by different sets of people at different uh, times. That means, I mean, 10 years apart or so, different people published their results. Uh, but uh, the, 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 all, the, all the people did it independently. So this is the most experiment. This was done in the Hitachi labs in Japan. Uh, they had developed a detector which can detect even single electrons. So therefore, here is the detector. And they had a slit. You see, this is the slit that is schematically shown. There was a source of electrons. They were the from the source the electrons having all having the same energy. I mean, mono energetic electrons, so to say, will be coming out. And then you have a wire, a very thin wire, which is one by thousand millimeter thick, very, very thin. And these electrons can pass through the left side of the slit or through left side of the wire or through the right side. And then you observe their arrival at the detector. So let me let me give you the the video of this experiment. Okay, this is where I consume time because uh, I have to switch. I'm sorry, I will show you the video in a second. Oh, I'm sorry, there again something has gone wrong. Uh, where was I? Yeah, this is the screen that I want. I hope this is visible now, and I hope. It's visible, sir. So you see, when you do, this is actually what you see on the detector. You find that the bright spots are actually appearing at uh, different locations. These are arrival points of single electrons. Uh, they could do this because their detector could uh, detect the arrival of single electrons. So you see, what you should notice is that the, they are collecting electrons and there is no pattern that is visible yet. They seem to be arriving at uh, different locations randomly, even though they were sent out in the same fashion. They were all prepared in the same fashion, but their arrival points seem to be random. This is one of the uh, puzzling things about uh, behavior of uh, quantum objects.
Okay. Yeah, usually I show the video once again, but uh, I'm pressed for time, so let me proceed. So what is happening is that if you do this experiment with the electrons, what is it that we find? Uh, see, what you find is that electrons resemble bullets. Why do I say that? That is because you see, you, I can detect where it is arriving. So therefore, when it is arriving, you get one electron. You don't get half an electron. You get one electron, then next electron, fourth, third electron, fourth electron, and so on. And this is just uh, like bullets. Bullets, you can actually count them. Similarly, I can count the number of electrons. It is not difficult, given the technology. So therefore, I would have expected that the behavior of electrons would be similar to that of bullets. And so if we had the two slit experiment and if I kept only one slit open, I hopefully would have obtained this pattern I1. And then uh, if I kept only slit number two open, I would have obtained this pattern. And if I kept all the slits open because they behave like bullets, I would have expected behavior similar to those of bullets. And that would, should have been the initial distribution. But if you actually do the experiment, this is not the pattern that you get. You get an I12, which is very different. Uh, this is not what happens. But what happens is actually this one. So therefore, uh, this is the correct pattern that you get. Let me play it again. This is the correct pattern that you get. And so therefore, you see in this the two slit experiment, the behavior of electrons, if you want to explain it, you have to say that, okay, electrons have a wave nature. Otherwise, there is no possible way to explain the behavior of the electrons in this case. So even though they are like bullets, they are also having some wave nature. And if you have wave nature, how will you calculate psi 1, 2? Sorry, I 1, 2. The answer is, you see, you have to say that, okay, there is a wave associated with the electron. And if that is the way it is, there is must be something which is similar to the displacement in the case of water surface. Uh, and that something, what we, we will, we usually refer to it as the wave function. So therefore, in the case of electrons, if you wanted to calculate I12, you have to say that, okay, there is a psi1, there is an I1, there is a psi1, uh, or psi12 precisely, uh, which is useful, which is referred to as the wave function. And if you square it, then of course you will get the intensity. Uh, but before I go into that, you see, this is the experiment that I have shown you. This was published in the American Journal of Physics, which must be very familiar to you. Uh, by the American Association of Physics Teachers. Uh, this was published in 1987. The experiment itself was reported, if I remember correctly, uh, in 1984, and they published the paper later. And this is actually considered to be among the most beautiful experiments ever done in physics. So this is what I was telling you before I showed you the, the reference to that paper. I want to is actually obtainable from the wave function. All that you need to do is you take the wave function and take its magnitude and square it, you will get the intensity. So therefore, you see, electrons are actually rather peculiar. They have lumpiness and they have interference. So they behave like waves and they also behave like particles. And if you wanted to calculate density, this is the prescription. Psi 1, 2 is actually the sum of Psi 1 and Psi 2. Okay, I think I will uh, skip this because again, I realize uh, I'm being very slow. Uh, see, the, there is this wave particle duality, and the wave particle duality was actually first observed in the case of light. And I shall give you a little bit of history. Uh, Newton said light is a beam of particles. I mean, you're all physics people, so therefore you know the history. Uh, but even before him, Eugen said, said light exhibits interference, and therefore it should have a wave nature. And then came along Maxwell, who formulated the electromagnetic theory of light, which put the 
which has kind of established the facts that light has a wave nature and they are waves. But this was a question by Einstein, because he said to explain photoelectric effect, you have to assume that light has a particle nature. And that was actually confirmed by Compton, who in his scattering experiments showed that if you want to calculate the change in the wavelength, you have to assume that light has particle nature, yes, particles, and he could calculate the change in the wavelength as a result of scattering. So the physicists of those days were actually quite confused because it appeared that in some experiments, light seemed to behave like waves. And in some experiments, they seem to behave like particles. And so this is only a joke. It looked, it, saw, it, it appeared that on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, light is a particle, while on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, it is a wave. And so this was a very confusing time because it was not clear. And of course, you would notice that, you see, I have not included Hello. Uh, in the power fail, he will rejoin soon within a few minutes. Sir, rejoin the sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir, mute the region. Sir, mute the region.
Can you hear me now? Yeah, welcome. Yeah, it is. Can, can you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry okay. about that. I don't know what happened because there was no power failure. Maybe my I was connected through my mobile and I think that has gone out of data perhaps, which is quite unlikely, but that seems to have been the case. So I have switched over to my home connection, but that connection, unfortunately, is not very well behaved. Uh, it is erratic. It is a BSNL connection. Anyway, uh, we will. I will restart the presentation. I don't know how much you have listened. I mean, how much you have been able to hear. Okay, I hope you can see me now when see the presentation yeah. and I will yeah. start yes. the presentation. Okay, presentation. Yeah, it's okay, coming. Somebody has tell me whether the screen is visible. Yeah, screen is visible. It yeah. is fine. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, kel sir, Kelgam, screen visible, Anna. Uh, um, presentation on a large uh, okay. Presentation model, I am on sir. Screen visible on. Yes. Okay. Uh, well. Sir, you are presenting the whole screen. Instead of the presentation, you are presenting the whole screen. Okay, then I will start. Apparently, I can, I mean, you can hear me, but I am not able to hear anything from your side. Uh, let me see. So. Okay, sir. It is okay, now. I suggest that Titus can give me a call if, if you cannot hear me. But of course, that what I have said is meaningless because how can you eh? hear sir, what I said just sir, now? Kelkan, kelkan. Anyway, okay. uh, let us say. Titus, sir, sir, number one, what are you talking about? Titus, if you are hearing me, give me a call. Sir, mute your Sabash, sir. Hello. Uh, sir, okay, is it fine? You can hear me now? Uh, welcome, welcome, sir. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. I mean, I don't know how much I have, how much you have seen me, but anyway, I'll okay. start from screen. this one. Okay. Screen him, Karna. So, you see, on, uh, this was the situation uh, in, in those days. You see, it appeared as if on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it seemed to behave like a particle. And on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, it is a wave. Uh, and then, of course, you see on Sundays, uh, what do what did they do? They would go to their place of worship and pray to the Lord for a clarification. Is it a particle or is it a wave? And now, of course, we know that it is both. It has a dual nature. And in, interestingly, not only uh, light, the electrons, protons, neutrons, and even the rather big molecules like C60 have this dual nature. And so, uh, in fact, experiments have been done with C60, a big molecule like C60, which is known as Buckminster Fullerene. And even those molecules, people have demonstrated they have a dual nature. They have a particle as well as a wave nature. So this is the molecule C60. And this is the result of a two-slit experiment. Okay, This is the case where there, is, there are uh, there is interference, and this is the case where there is no interference. So you can see that it also has a wave nature. Okay, we will skip this. Then there have been experiments done with another molecule, which is referred to as thylacinins. I do have the videos of those experiments, but again, I am going to skip them. And a very important idea regarding the particle, connecting the particle and the wave nature of particles or electrons, neutrons, and so on, is the de Broglie relationship. This was uh, proposed by de Broglie and later on accidentally verified. 
who said that you see the the particle nature for example if it is a particle it has a momentum p and that momentum and its wave nature the wavelength lambda are related and he said that or he suggested that the relationship is actually uh, lambda is equal to h by p and this is valid for all microscopic things so this was his suggestion that's all that i shall spend i shall talk about the the de broly relationship because what is interesting at the moment or what is more important is actually to realize that if you have waves there are certain interesting things that you can think about them if you think about them you say here i have shown a wave the wave is actually incident from the right it is moving towards the left this is actually what is referred to as a wave pulse it is coming from this side and hitting this wall and it is going back and you will see the reflection in this animation but suppose you have put a same kind of wall on this side on the right side also what is the result that you will see here see if you if you have walls on both the sides and you have a stretched string in between these two walls and if you cause an initial displacement of the string uh, which is this one okay that the, the the configuration that you saw just now is the displacement of the string that i have been somehow produced and then what will happen is that this displacement will move on the string it will get reflected from this side and and the other side so it gets reflected from the both the sides and so you have a disturbance that seems to be moving around in the string so this is something that we will refer to as a traveling wave the, because the string is not uh, you see the, the the displacement actually is moving around on the string which is stretched but then you being physicists of course will realize that it is also possible to produce certain special kinds of displacements what are these special kinds of displacements uh, well let me tell you what they are see for example this is a special kind of displacement that you can produce uh, these are actually waves which we are not traveling you will say that okay there is displacement of the string but the wave itself is not really traveling it is standing stationary in space so this is actually a special example of a wave which is not traveling but it is it is referred to as a standing wave and this in fact is the simplest possible standing wave pattern that you can produce and what actually is happening is that you have produced a displacement it is a wave and it is actually getting reflected from both the sides and the reflection is such that the wave gets reinforced that's one way to look at it and of course you can produce other other standing wave patterns for example this is the next possible standing wave pattern and this pattern and the previous pattern are different in that this pattern has one node a node here uh, a node is a point where there is no displacement of the string while in this previous one there is, there is no node so therefore this one has one node and that node is actually a point so what is it it is a point where the the string does not get displaced then if you think of the next possible standing wave pattern this is another one and in that case you will see that there are two points one point here and one point somewhere there where the string does not get displaced so if you think about it you see you have a string all of you will agree that a string is a one dimensional object and if you have a standing wave on a string you see the the nodes are actually points and points as you know are zero dimensional objects so when you have waves in one dimension you have nodes which are zero dimensional in a similar fashion you can think of more complex situations is another standing wave pattern and these are all the different standing wave patterns that i have already 
shown you. And these are all waves in, these are all examples from one dimension. But now suppose you have a rectangular membrane. See, I mean, I have never seen a rectangular drum, but if you were crazy enough to construct a rectangular drum, then this is the kind of behavior that you will see. But of course you have circular drums and their behavior is analogous. So imagine you have a stretched membrane, the membrane is fixed along the peripheries and imagine I, I take my hand and heat it somewhere there, producing a displacement, okay, something like that. And then if you, if you are able to observe, what you find is that this displacement moves around in a time dependent fashion. So therefore you have a time dependent wave which is moving around on the, on the membrane, which is, but of course you see there is reflection from the boundaries. And what is happening is that the, the reflections actually make it quite complex and therefore the wave actually seems to move around. Okay. So, but then just as in the previous case, it is possible for you to produce a standing wave patterns. You see, for example, this is a, is a simple standing wave pattern. Uh, the simplest one, and in fact, this has no nodes. And then this is the next more complex standing wave pattern. It has one node. And what is that node? That node is actually along a line. You can see this line, this particular line. Sorry. Uh, this particular line, this particular line, there is no displacement of this, of the membrane. So that actually is a node. And in this case, of course, you will realize that the node is one dimensional. Uh, your wave actually is on a two dimensional membrane. So you, when you have waves in two dimensions, the nodes are actually one dimensional. I mean, these are actually very simple things. You can also have a different kind of node. You see the, here the node is actually perpendicular to the previous node. In this wave, this standing wave is similar to the previous one, but the nodes are actually perpendicular to each other. This is the node. Then you can have uh, two nodes. See here, there are two lines along which the displacement is zero. You can also have more complex situations. You see, for example, this is another, yet another standing wave pattern having more nodes. Now, this is actually, if you had a rectangular membrane, all these standing wave patterns are shown here. On the other hand, if you had a circular membrane, this is the kind of thing that will happen. I have shown you the different standing wave patterns. This one has no node. This has one circular node. This has actually two circular nodes, the, this one. Then this has one uh, node, which is a line. This is a node, which also is a line. One second. That's in a young lecture here. And the, where was I? I was uh, having this as a uh, node, the, that's a line. This also has a line that is a node and then uh, this has two lines, which are nodes. So what is the connection of all this with, uh, with quantum mechanics and behavior of microscopic objects? The connection is actually very simple. See, the electrons have a wave nature. And in the case of waves, you see, it is possible for you to have waves which are referred to as traveling waves. They are actually moving around. It is also possible for you to have standing wave patterns. So similarly, if electrons have a wave nature, it should be possible to observe two kinds of waves. You see, it should be possible to you to have traveling waves. It should also be possible for you to have standing waves. So suppose I want to think of standing waves. You see, standing waves arise when you have confined the wave to some area of space. So for example, imagine somehow I have a box which is two dimensional, which is rather difficult to imagine. But when you say two dimensional physicists, of course, will realize that that means you see the length in one direction is very small in comparison with the length in the other, other directions. So you have a very thin box essentially. And if you have such a thin two dimensional box, 
And if we put an electron in there, what is going to happen? The electron is put inside a box, so therefore it is going to get reflected from the boundaries of the box. Well, you may say that this is rather artificial, but uh, it is not so artificial as you will see in the next few slides. So this electron, it is possible that it will, I mean, it's not possible for it to go out. So therefore, it will get reflected from the boundaries of the box. So, but of course, this electron has a wave nature. So therefore, this wave actually will get reflected. And therefore, it is possible for you to have standing waves set up inside this two-dimensional box. Okay, so this is the experiment, a very nice experiment, which was done around 1994 or 95. What they did was they had they made a box in two dimensions. Uh, how did they make that? Well, the answer is actually this was the surface of copper metal. I don't remember which particular surface, but anyway, it was one surface, uh, maybe one zero zero surface of copper. And they arranged iron atoms, Fe atoms, iron atoms. So these are what you see in this image are actually iron atoms arranged in the form of a rectangle on the surface of copper. And this surface of copper, it was such that you see there were electrons which were uh, confined to the surface. So that means you see their waves will not penetrate into the bulk. So therefore, they were these electrons were confined to the surface of copper. That is how the surface was chosen. And then you put another constraint that they are surrounded by these iron atoms, which are shown here. And once these ion atoms actually confine them, they, what happens is that the electrons which are inside the, this box, they are actually confined to the box and therefore they will form standing wave patterns. And these standing wave patterns formed by the electrons inside this two-dimensional box were imaged using the technique known as a scanning tunneling microscope. And then you see these undulations in electron density. So these undulations are I mean, imaged by a scanning tunnel microscope. And then you see that uh, there are undulations which actually demonstrate the formation of standing waves inside this two-dimensional box. They did this experiment with a rectangular box. They also did it with a circular box. This is a circular box. And you can see clearly the formation of standing wave patterns. They also did it with an elliptical box. So you can see that there is an ellipse and there is standing waves formed inside this elliptical box. So with this, you see, I mean, I come to essentially something that is of great interest to the chemist. Imagine I have an electron, I have it in three dimensions and imagine I confine it in, in three dimensions by putting a box around it. Then inside this three-dimensional box, the electrons will electron will form electron can form a standing wave pattern. And uh, what about these standing wave patterns? Okay. Now this is a again. I mean, the, these days it is actually possible to realize this because you have what are known as quantum wells. But let me think of the simplest possible example that is of greatest interest to a physicist or a chemist. In the case of the hydrogen, that is the case of hydrogen atom. So in the case of the hydrogen atom, you say you have an a proton right in the middle and you have the electron that is uh, moving it in its vicinity. Now you think about it uh, as a physicist, then you will say that, okay, this is a situation where, imagine you have a situation where the electron starts near the proton. And imagine that it doesn't have enough energy to go away because you see, once it is near the proton, it is, its energy, energy, the potential energy is low. And imagine if it is in such a situation that it doesn't have enough energy to go away to infinity. Because as the electron goes away, the potential energy increases. And it doesn't have the enough energy to go into that region. So then what happens essentially is that the electron is confined to the vicinity of the proton. So if it tries to go away in one direction, you see, it eventually has to come back. This means that you see, the, the, the proton actually is causing the electron to be confined to some region around it. So even though there is no boundary, real boundary that is that has been put in, the attractive interaction between the proton and the electron 
causes the electron to be confined to the vicinity of the proton and therefore the wave associated with the electron. You see what is possible. It definitely can form a time-dependent wave in which the, wave, the electron uh, will move around. That means uh, the wave function for it will be changing as a function of time. Uh, and therefore, the electron density distribution will also, because electron density distribution is given by the square of psi, that also will change. Such a wave is possible. But what is more interesting is that, or at least uh, to a beginner, what is more interesting is that this wave that the electron has, it can form a standing wave around the proton. So what is the kind of standing wave that can be formed? The answer is that you see, this is actually a wave in three dimensions. So when a standing wave is formed, you see in the earlier cases, we have seen that the simplest possible standing wave pattern had no nodes. So in a similar fashion, if the electron forms a wave, Around the proton, the simplest standing wave pattern has no nodes. And what would you expect? The next one has one node, the next you would expect has two nodes, the next would have three nodes, and so on. And these are waves in three dimensions. So, therefore, you would expect that the nodes are actually one dimension less. That means the nodes must be two dimensional. So, for example, if you have the simplest possible standing wave pattern, it would not have any nodes. And that is something that is actually very familiar to the students. These are actually uh, what are referred to as the S orbitals. And uh, I'm sure all of you know the shapes of S orbitals. So the orbitals, the atomic orbitals that uh, we have, they are nothing but standing wave patterns that are formed by the electron waves around the nucleus. The simplest possible standing wave pattern, you would not expect it to have any nodes. And that is actually what happens. It is nothing but your S orbital. Then the next possible standing wave pattern that can be formed, formed is actually the P orbital. OK. Uh, that has one node. It is actually, in the case, this is a P and atomic orbital. It has one node. The node is having the shape of, a, I mean, it's actually a planar. Okay, it is a plane. So it is actually a two dimensional node. Then this is a more complex standing wave pattern. This is a d orbital. It has actually two surfaces which are nodes. Right? It is not a planar node, but this has two surfaces which are nodes. And then this is a dxy orbital. It has actually two planes which are perpendicular to each other as nodes. Then this is an FEZ cube. It has actually three surfaces, which are nodes. And of course, I have even more complex atomic orbital drawn here. This is referred to as G Z to the power of four. It is just a same kind of thing as an FEZ cube, uh, but that is but simply just more nodes. So these are very simple things. There are some just standing wave patterns in three dimensions. Okay, yeah, well, I am almost nearing the end of the time allotted to me, I suppose. But there are uh, very interesting things that I would like to discuss. So let me go to the first one. This is actually the question, do we understand quantum mechanics? And to discuss that question, I want you to have a look at the this particular sphere. Okay, if you look at him and you see this, uh, if you compare the size of the skier with the size of the tree, you will realize that the, size, the tree is rather big. But then if you look at the mark left by the skis, right? you see that one line goes like that. It goes to, through one side of the tree, and the other ski mark actually is on the other side of the tree. So this is uh, something that is simply impossible. I mean, you cannot uh, have ski marks of this nature because simply it is impossible. Now, with that reminder, so therefore, you see, in our world, we cannot imagine such a thing happening. So let, with that, let me go back to the to the two slit experiment. This is my two slit experiment, and imagine I keep only one slit open. 
right? If I keep only this lid open, then the intensity distribution that I get is this one. And if I kept both the slits open, the inertia distribution that I get is, I, we have already discussed this, the inertia distribution that I get is, get is this one. So for example, if you look at this particular point, you will find that there are no electrons arriving at that point. Now, this particular point actually corresponds to that point in this figure where I kept only one slit open. So what is interesting is that if I keep only one slit open, then electrons are arriving there. While if I kept both the slits open, none of the electrons are arriving there. And that is actually very strange if you think about it. Because if I kept one slit open, electrons do arrive there. But if I kept both the slits open, none of the electrons arrive there. What does it mean? It means that any electron passing through the system somehow knows that I have kept both the slits open. And remember, these slits are not very close. You see, they are uh, apart. Right? So physically they are apart. And therefore it is impossible to think of an electron going through, I mean, if, if the electron were a normal particle, it is impossible for me to think of it as going through this slit as well as that slit. I would expect that it feels only one slit when it is passing through the system. But somehow you see none of the electrons are arriving there and therefore I realize that the any electron that has passed through the system somehow realizes that both the slits, the experimentalist has kept both the slits open. So the question is, uh, how does the electron know that the, both the slits are open? And the answer actually is, if from a classical thinking, it is the only thing that you can say is, I don't understand it. But then, of course, you see, from uh, quantum mechanics, we think we understand it. We say that, okay, there is a wave associated with the electron. What is happening is that the electron, uh, the, the wave associated with the electron goes through both the slits and interferes at the backstop. Okay. In fact, uh, this is a kind of joke because Feynman used to go around saying that nobody understands quantum mechanics. So therefore, you see, the, if you think of the electron and if it is passing through both the slits, uh, somehow the electron passes through both the slits. And therefore, even though this is not possible in the macroscopic world, right? In the macroscopic world, apparently this is possible. So now we have the very interesting question. How does an electron propagate? Okay, Titus, can you tell me how many more minutes can I take? Uh, I know I have hurried through, actually, even then I... Yeah, uh, it is... Um, have by not 12 now. covered everything, by and I suspect I have gone rather uh, fast. Titus, could you answer? Yeah, sir. Can you can you hear me, sir? Somebody. Sir, uh, can you hear me? Titus, sir, I'm near to Bolikin. I can't learn. Ah, Bolikin. Itra itra mani re poam bete naok. Ro ten minutes soon to wind up. I'm bete on sochu. 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 Ah, unam poam the do. Okay, that leaves me very worried because I have not had answers from anybody. Titus, sir, I'm Bolikin. Hello. Okay, 15 minutes, I'm, I will try to finish. Okay, fine, great. Great, at least you people can hear me, I suppose. Okay, great. Okay. 
so the the next thing is actually i mean the, it is all nice to have this physical understanding and so i would like to have uh, an understanding of how an electron actually moves so for that i again go back to the two slit experiment and this actually brings me to my own favorite topic uh, the path integral so if you are asked what is how does an electron move in space the answer is that it takes all possible paths and that may sound like a very strange answer but uh, let us let me tell you the idea see imagine that you had the two slit experiment and now we want to think of a more complex arrangement imagine of course these are all thought experiments you don't really have to perform them imagine you have an arrangement where between the source and the backstop here you have three walls and each one of the walls have two slits right so therefore you see the electron if suppose you are going to do an experiment where you produce the electron here and somehow uh, try to detect them at the backstop at this particular point let me say and then what is the chance that you will find the electron arriving at around that point the answer is that you will have to calculate the wave function for the electron and if you wanted to calculate the wave function how should you proceed in the case of a uh, two slit experiment you had only two possible ways in which the electron could arrive at a particular point either it passes through first slit or it passes through the second slit now what can happen in this complex x arrangement is that the electron can pass through this slit okay then it can pass through that slit and then it can pass through this one and arrive at the backstop so that what i'm talking about is this red path or it can take this green path where it passes through that slit then through this slit and then through this one and arrives and of course if you think about it there are eight different possible paths that the electrons could take and electron could take and therefore in this case what you have to do is you have to think of all these possible paths or you can say okay the waves could have taken any of these eight different possible paths so each such path will make a contribution to the wave function and therefore you will have to say you have psi1 as the contribution from the first path psi2 as the contribution from the second path psi3 as the contribution from the third then psi8 as the contribution from the eighth path and so you have to add up all these contributions so psi1 plus psi2 plus psi3 etc until psi8 will give me the total wave function and once you get that total wave function you have to take its magnitude and square it and then you will be able to get the intensity or the you will essentially if you are talking about a single electron you will get the probability density so now imagine i make the arrangement even more complex by introducing more uh walls here i think i have 12 i have put in 12 walls and i have put four four slits on each one of them then what happens you see if you wanted to calculate the probability density that the electron will be arriving at that, that location then uh, you have to think of uh, all possible paths in fact you have to think of four to the power of 12 because there are 12 walls each one having uh, four slits so therefore you will have four to the power of 12 possible paths and you have to calculate the contribution from each path which you may say are psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 etc you need actually need a prescription for calculating the contribution from a particular path but if you have that prescription then what you have to do is you have to add together all those contributions and you will get the total wave function at this point and you take its magnitude and square it you will get the wave function so that is the prescription you can think of even making it think the situation even more complex you see here i have simply introduced more slits and you will realize that the moment i introduce more slits what will happen i have more paths that will contribute to the wave function so therefore what i will do is i will think of a very hypothetical situation where i have infinite number of walls between the source and the uh, and the detector but of course you see this infinite number of walls i have to imagine that they are all having only infinite cell thickness 
and then i will go on making slits in them so i say make more make more and more slits what is going to happen the number of paths actually that contribute to the wave function actually goes on increasing so eventually you think of the limit where i have made so many slits that these walls actually disappear so therefore you see the walls are there and the slits are also there but only in my mind right so that in the ultimate limit where i have made so many slits the the walls themselves disappear but of course the paths don't disappear their number is actually increasing so eventually in the situation where the the walls have all disappeared you have infinite number of paths contributing to the wave function and think about it what we are talking about is actually the propagation of an electron in free space so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that if you if you are in the limit of infinite walls each with infinite slits what we are saying is that okay i have produced i have my started with an electron here and after some time i want to uh, detect it at, at, the, at this location after some time then what i should imagine is that i should think of a all possible paths which will start here these are not classical paths these are actually all possible paths that you can imagine we uh, starting here at the at the initial time and ending at that location at the final time so think of all such possible paths each path will make a contribution to the wave function that is the conclusion and therefore what should you do you should first calculate the contribution of a given path and to do that for all the possible paths and then add up together all these contributions and then the result will be the total wave function for the electron so if you want a prescription i i will not go into the mathematical details but because you are all physicists you will understand what is being done this is actually the contribution of a given path so if i am given such a path what i have to do is i have to calculate this and then obviously you know what is i i is the square root of minus 1 you are you are doing quantum mechanics so naturally planck's constant would be there so h cross and then you have something which is actually very well known to classical mechanics people this is the quantity that is referred to as the action action is the integral of the difference between kinetic and potential energies so therefore for a, if you are given a particular path you can calculate the action and of course you know that the classical path is the one that makes the action an extremum but in quantum mechanics you see all, it is not just the classical path that is important all the paths that the system can take make a contribution so for each path you evaluate the action multiplied by i divided by h cross take its exponential so therefore you will get a complex number and then you have to sum over all the possible paths and then multiply it by a suitable constant i will not go into the details other than to say that this is a kind of normalization factor which makes sure you that your wave function square actually is normalized that means total probability has to work out to unity and therefore this n actually ensures that okay yeah well we will i'll skip this i don't have time so this is a nice uh, video which shows the experimental observations and in fact there is one experimental observation that i have not discussed but it is it appears towards the end of this <coughs> video oh, okay sorry that video has not played i don't think it will <coughs> so this is essentially a summary of what i have been telling you you first imagine that you have the two slit experiment done with particles this is the result then you do it with waves
and and now you say you imagine you doing the experiment with electrons or any other particle which is a quantum object uh then what happens you see this imagine you are sending out only one electron then you see there is a wave associated with that electron and what happens to the wave the wave passes and hits the uh, the uh, the backstop and when you detect it actually you find that it is a particle it because it is found only at a particular location at this location and if you repeated the experiment uh, you will find that you see the way the electron this particular electron has arrived there but the next electron need not arrive there and that is a peculiar behavior of quantum so then uh, then when you have actually collected the uh, the, the pattern from a large number of uh, sorry. sorry i mean i just wanted to go back So when you have actually collected together the pattern from a large number of electrons, you find that there is interference. And now that we can also ask, you see, the suppose you have a you, you observe the electron when it is passing through these two slits. Our conclusion was that the wave associated with the electron passes through yes. both the slits. Sorry, I have a call one second. Hello, I'm, I'm giving a lecture. So what happens is, suppose you add an observer and the observer is going to see through which slit it has gone. What would happen? And that is also demonstrated, as I said, this is something that I have not spoken about. So, so the so the interesting thing is actually the when you observe it, if you if you do an experiment to observe it, then actually the electron passes through both the slits. Sorry, <laughs> through only one slit. Uh, and if you do not observe, you find that it, it is able to pass through both the slits. And this is what makes it very, very strange. 
uh okay i have two more minutes well maybe i will make three more minutes i will take three more minutes and finish because this also is equally interesting so i i mean again because i am i have, don't have enough time i shall be very quick you think of a drunken walker this of course is if you are familiar with uh, the tintin comics this is the famous captain haddock who is always drunk so imagine you have this person drunken person who gets drunk in the evening right in the evening he goes to the bar sits in the bar and drinks and then let us say 10 pm he comes out and he of course wants to go home but he has no sense of direction so he will execute a walk which a physicist will say is a drunken person's walk so what is the definition of mathematical definition of a drunken person's walk well you see we can say each step that he takes is in a direction independent of the previous direction let me repeat each step that he takes is in a direction that is independent of the previous step because you see he has no memory so on if you observe him on a particular day then this is probably the the path through which he would have walked then on the next day he will find you will find that you follow a different path the next day he follows the and attend the path and following day suppose you have done this for 365 days then each time you will find that it takes different paths you will not take the same path to, uh, two times right so therefore what can you say suppose you say okay uh, after suppose he starts there at 10 pm where will he be after one hour well the answer is that i you don't have a definite answer but then of course i can say okay maybe i can give you the probability of finding him in this location perhaps because i know for certain that he is a drunken person he will not have walked maybe 4 kilometers away from the from the original starting point so it is actually possible for me to assign a probability distribution for him a uh, probability distribution of finding him at a particular location so this is very much similar to the case of the electron right you can only assign probability distributions you cannot say with certainty where the electron will be that is the first thing and further if you wanted to calculate for example uh, let me say he has started here at 10 pm and at 11 pm i want to calculate the probability density of finding him at this location how could he have arrived at that location the answer is that you see he could have for example started here at 10 pm and taken this path walked for one hour and then arrived at that location at 11 pm or he could this is another possible path that he could have taken this is another possible path that he could have taken this is another one and there are of course infinite number of paths that he could have taken starting here at 10 pm arriving there at 11 pm and also therefore i say all these paths are probable and then uh, it should be possible for me to assign a probability uh, density kind of thing for each path right uh, well this has to be made a little bit more precise mathematically but i will not have the time to do it so anyway the idea is that for each path you can actually assign something like a probability and therefore what you have to do is you can add calculate the probabilities assigned to each one of these paths and then add them up and you will get <coughs> the probability density of finding at that location so therefore essentially you see here also you have an infinite number of paths contributing each path makes a contribution to the probability and of course you see here things are a little bit different because each path is making a contribution to the probability and probabilities are all positive definite whereas in the case of the electron the behavior is very similar but each path is making a contribution to the wave function and the contribution actually in the case of quantum mechanics it is a complex number whereas here each path is making a contribution to the probability and probabilities are always positive so their probabilities can only add up they don't interfere with each other they don't cancel each other so therefore this is also a little bit different but the very interesting thing is that you see that as far as mathematics is concerned the mathematics is the same 
even though physically you have constructive and destructive interference, you see, if you wanted to calculate the wave function, you can use the same kind of mathematics that you use for uh, use for calculating probabilities in the case of random walks. And this actually is referred to as the path integral or a more sophisticated word will be to, you, to talk about functional integral. So functional integration is a technique that will connect quantum mechanics as well as it, it is applicable in quantum mechanics. It is also applicable in the case of random walks. And of course, the behavior of the in quantum mechanics is weird because the contributions of a path may be uh, positive or negative or, or even more generally the contributions in general complex. So I think I shall leave, leave you with these references. Well, I, if you have recorded the presentation, then you can look at the recording to see the more details. Uh, but I want to advertise myself. Sorry for the advertisement. I have a set of lectures. You see, I mean, some parts of the lecture I have to hurry through, and therefore you would not have had the time to understand. If you are uh, interested, you can have a set of a look at the set of lectures of mine in on quantum chemistry. This is essentially meant for chem chemists, but physics students will hopefully find it interesting. What I have done is actually the first four lectures that you of, of this is summarized into one hour in this particular lecture that I gave. And therefore, if you look at YouTube and search for my name or, uh, or, or quantum chemistry, you will find link to the these lectures. You can find them on YouTube. And if you watch the first four lectures, actually, that uh, what I have, as I said, what I have given you is a summary of the first four lectures. And therefore, there I am more relaxed and I have taken more time. And it is, uh, in fact, among the chemists, it is actually very popular because as of now, it has had four, four lakhs of views on the YouTube in total for all the lectures together. And I, at this point, I would like to thank you. Oh, okay, there is this interesting question. What do you think of quantum mechanics? Is it uh, frightening or is it beautiful? And I would like to thank you all for your attention. I think I have taken five more minutes. I'm sorry for that. And I would like to thank the organizers once again. Thank you. And I do not know whether I'll be able to hear whatever you said. Hello. Sir, I have a headphone. I have a headphone. Okay, speak now and maybe I can hear. No, I can't hear. Okay, okay. It's okay, sir. Um, uh, let me... Well, I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll leave and rejoin. If I rejoin, it might happen. But anyway. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. But you can speak on the phone and I shall hear. That's it. Okay. Sir, rejoin jam at I mean, I can rejoin, but it will... Okay. Okay. What should I do? Uh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, we, uh, the, the, the last uh, thing is to what of thanks. So, uh, uh, my dear friends and colleagues and students, uh, in the mouth of a great master, is the basics of quantum mechanics, which are seems to be very strange. But we heard it in the most beautiful way. And the special piece that we have got is uh, an idea about the path integrals. Mathematically, it seems very difficult to understand the uh, details of that. But uh, uh, Professor Sebastian has gave it in a most beautiful way. The basic idea or necessity of the techniques of path integrals in quantum mechanics. So on behalf of uh, all of us, especially on behalf of the committee of APT, uh, we, we depict our most sincere thanks to our great teacher, Professor Gail Sebastian, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Thank, thank you, sir. Um, Harishan. Hello. Okay, okay. Sir, thanks for coming. Sir, there is some. Sir, there is an audio issue. There is a question. So, we can go to Now we can go to our other program. Yes, me. Okay. Ah, okay. Hello. Okay, okay. 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 So after the wonderful, uh, beautiful presentation about the strange uh, topic of quantum mechanics, let us move to felicitate our uh, talent search examination winners. So I would like to uh, call Dr. Seema R, the TSE coordinator of 2019, and also the uh, Academy of Physics Teachers Joint Secretary to introduce the ta talent search examination winners. Over to you, Seema. Okay, thank you. One second, let me present. Can you hear me, Rishmi? Yeah, Kelka, Kelka. Yes, Kelka, 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 Kelka. A warm good evening to one and all. Um, so it's time to fel uh, felicitate the winners of uh, all Kerala Physics Talent Search Examination winners 2019. Uh, it is conducted by the Academy of Physics Teachers Kerala. So let me uh, first give you a brief idea of the Talent Search uh, Examination uh, 2019. The All Kerala Physics Talent uh, search examination uh, is a statewide competitive examination conducted annually by uh, Academy of Physics teachers Kerala for the undergraduate physics students. The objective of our talent search examination is to identify and encourage young talents in physics. All Kerala Physics Talent Search Examination 2019 was conducted on 30th November 2019. 55 colleges participated in the event and 1,900 students applied for the examination. Out of this, 1,277 students appeared for the examination. The examination was conducted at uh, 53 centers in Kerala. The All Kerala Physics Talent Search exam Examination consists of uh, two parts, a written examination and an interview. The interview was held at uh, four centers. Uh, Cochin University of Science and Technology, MG College, ET Kannur, Government College, Kottayam, Government Arts and Science College, Kolikot. The final mark list, rank list was prepared based on the marks in the interview and return examination taken together. Total of 31 students were selected in the All Kerala Physics Talent Search Examination topper, Toppers List. So the first rank of uh, the prize goes to um, Mr. Varghese Reji, uh, Basilis College, Kottayam. At present, um, he is um, joined as uh, for his integrated PhD and TIFR Mumbai. He'll be getting a cash prize of rupees 5,000, ECG Sudarshan Medal, some books and certificate. So, the ECG Sudarshan Medal for the first rank holder. And this is the certificate of appreciation for Mr. Varghese Reji. He's from Basilius College, Kottayam. This is the second uh, rank, uh, goes to Mr. Govinda Chakrabarti, Bharat Mata College, Trikakara. At present, uh, he is doing his MSc at IIT Karakpur. He'll be getting a cash prize of rupees four thousand books and certificate. This is a certificate of appreciation uh, to Mr. Gobind Chakrabarti. Third rank goes to Ms. An Anchita Sajivan K N Government College, Madapalli, Padagara. Present status is she is a third semester BSc physics student. She is getting a cash prize of rupees three thousand books and certificate. So I congratulate all the three rank holders. This is a certificate of appreciation for Anjita Sajivan. 
So this is a list of uh, top scorers of all Kerala Physics Talent Search Examination 2019. So once again, I congratulate all the three rank holders and the toppers of all Kerala Physics Talent Search Examination 2019. At this moment, on behalf of uh, the organizers of Talent Search Examination 2019, I would like to thank all the center coordinators, members of interview panel at different centers, college authorities, for the help they provided for the smooth functioning of Talent Search Examination 2019. I would like to thank all the participants of Talent Search Examination 2019. Thank you all once again. Seema, Kuttigal present on the one other, Varghese Raji, Govinda, okay, and then the one. And I'm going to have a video on the video on the same and introduce you. Yes, sir. I'll ask. Vargis, are you, oh yeah, Vargis is there. Is this Vargis? I am here. Yeah, he's from Basilius College. He's our first rank hold, first rank winner. And he, at present, he's a um, he has joined for Integrated MSc and TIFR Mumbai. Would you like to speak something, uh, Vargis Reji? Um, um. For this achievement, I thank uh, thank you to uh, uh, Dr. Sindhu John. She is here, and uh, Professor Nibu A. George. He is my professor in the Celius College, and all other teachers who teach me. And uh, to conduct this meeting, I thank you, APT, um, APT, and. Um, it, um, Panel members of APT. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, congratulations. Uh, Gobinda, Gobinda, are you here? Gobinda? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you? Yeah. Uh, I have switched on. Uh, is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. It's visible. Can you, would you like to speak something? Yeah, I would like to thank all my teachers uh, and all my friends. And I would like to thank APT for conducting this exam every year. It's a very good motivation for all the students. Yeah. That's so Govinda is uh, doing at present doing his MSc at IIT Kharagpur. Good. Congratulations, Govinda. Congratulations. Congratulations, Govinda. Ang Ankita? Ankita, are you here? I think Ankita is not present. Uh, I have not seen her. She has joined earlier. Okay. Ankita, she is a, a third semester uh, BSc uh, physics student, Government College, Hartwell. Okay, Seema, okay. Thank, you. thank you for your work. Thank wonderful you. work. In, in coordinating this uh, talent search examination. Thank you. Vishmi, we can move on to the next uh, program. Yeah. Congratulations to all the winners and uh, best wishes for all the future ventures. Congratulations to uh, Dr. Seema as well. And now uh, we, uh, we will move to the essay writing competition. I would like to call Dr. Sindhu Johns, the coordinator of essay writing competition, to introduce the winners. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Ashmi. Uh, uh, um, I'll just go to the share uh, share presentation. Okay, I've prepared a report on the state level essay competition that we have conducted on behalf of the topic was energy harvesting and storage. There were, uh, I mean, there were enough participants, but then we had a shortlist because it was an essay competition. We had a shortlist essay, so each competitor had to have shortlisted the essays and. Uh, Therefore, we had 35 student essays, which was evaluated. 
So all the coordinators, what they did was they shortlisted and either they sent it by post or they have scanned it and then sent it to me by the mail. And these essays, what we did was a panel was created and then evaluated and the results were declared at an ACP meeting. The prize money announced was, the first prize was 4,000 rupees, the second prize 3,000, and the third prize was 2,000 rupees. Now talking about the winners of state level essay competition, the first prize was not Etta Magdalene. She's a final year BSc chemistry student of St. Joseph's College. So this uh, essay competition was, uh, could be um, participated by all, I mean, any discipline uh, and also by postgraduate students also. So here, Elsa was declared winner. She receives a cash amount of 4,000 rupees with a, a certificate of accreditation. And her coordinator was Dr. Rose Lina, the HOD of St. Joseph's College. Congratulations, Elsa. Now, prize was Lakshmi Babu. She is from SH College Charity. She receives a prize of, I mean, a prize amount of rupees three thousand with a certificate of appreciation. And her work is from SH College Charity. Thanks to Nijo Vergis and also congratulations to Lakshmi Babu. Uh, the third Sindhu, prize was shared in Duke and Sindhu, I think the, your presentation is. Yeah. Your presentation, you it's not, it's not uh, changing the slides. Okay. Uh, it's not changing. Now, can you. The, th the third, third one has. Second and third one has not been changed. <laughs> the election slide is not shown. This, this can you see? Yeah, you see? we can see yeah, the last slide. Okay. Lakshmi, this can you see? No, we see. Yeah, yeah it's, now, like, it's, it's clear. Okay. So, second prize uh, was uh, won by Lakshmi Babu. She is from SH College, Chalakudi. She gets a prize amount of 3,000 rupees and a certificate of accreditation. And her coordinator was Dr. Nijo Vergi of SH College, Chalakudi. The screen is also viewable. Sharon also received the third prize. She's from SM College, Chartala. And she receives a prize amount of rupees with a certificate of appreciation. And her coordinator was Dr. Ramya Ramya. Sharon was the first. For Kana, what? Kana. And the third time again was shared by Alina Jacob. She is from SH College Chalakudi. And she also received the prize amount with a certificate of appreciation. And the coordinator was Dr. Nito Bogi of SH College Chalakudi. So this is about the can the winners of uh, state level essay competition. Um. Uh, Sindhu, yeah. they are present the item to switch on the video. If the students are present. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just call upon. Uh, Elsa, can you come up? Elsa is here. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm here. Okay. Elsa, could you speak on something? Elsa is from? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I will share. Good evening. Good evening, uh, good evening all of you. I am Elsa B. Magdalene. Can and, you show your uh, video? Hello? Can you show your video? Yeah. Can you show your video? Video, video is on, sir. Yeah. Video is on. I can't hear, sir. I can't hear. Okay, okay, okay. 
you can continue your video is on okay. i am elsa p magdalen i have just completed my uh, bsc degree from st joseph's college for women alpura and um, i am very happy uh, that i uh, got an opportunity to take part in the essay writing competition um uh, essay writing competition conducted by uh, physics department uh, and i have secured the first position and um uh, when i heard about this competition uh, when i heard about this topic energy harvesting and uh, storage as a chemistry student i first think that it was an uh, uh, it was uh, something related to energy consumption energy conservation and uh, later i uh, approached some sources and i could understand that uh, this is something uh, uh, very uh, socially relevant topic and i am very uh, i found that it is a socially relevant topic and everyone need to know this and uh, in this occasion i um, express my sincere gratitude to all the teachers of the physics department and uh, the innovative ideas and the um, uh, a harmonious approach from the part of these teachers of the physics department uh, for ensuring the participation of all the students from different uh, disciplines is uh, really appreciable and uh, in this occasion i give my special thanks to uh, sin uh, respected sindhu john smith from the basilius college kottayam Uh, for uh, giving me all the informations about this program thank you thank you all congratulations thank you elsa now i call upon lakshmi lakshmi please do come lakshmi babu yeah. good evening everyone i am lakshmi i am from sekitha college members of the academy of physics teachers for conducting लक्ष्मी टेल मी दी हेड सम प्रॉब्लम विद इंटरनेट Okay, then the next Shmi? person. Can... Okay, uh, Sharon is there. Sharon, Sharon. Yes, yes, ma'am, I'm here. Uh, okay, go. Yeah, just come up. Please come up. Good evening, all. In this occasion, I would like to express my gratitude to Academy of Physics Teachers Kerala for providing such an opportunity to the students of various colleges. and also i thank my teachers who encouraged me to participate in this event thank you congratulations congratulations sir next is alina alina are you here yes. alina yes. okay come yeah come up please Yes, here yeah, I am Alina. I am a postgraduate student from Sekhar Head College, Chalakudi, and I, I would like to thank all my teachers from Sekhar Head College, Chalakudi, especially Dr. Nijal sir and uh, all the teacher teachers in Academy of Teachers Association for this warm opportunity, and I especially thank Dr. Sindhu Johns uh, for uh, connecting me with all the regarding uh, information regarding this program, and I thank you everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations. So thank you all. Uh, thank you for giving me, me giving me this opportunity to conduct this uh, essay state level essay competition. Thank you all. Thank you and over to Rashmi. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Rashmi, ma'am. Uh, yeah. An Hello. Uh, Ankita Sajivan. Ankita uh, Sajivan is have joined us. May I? Uh, okay. May I Very, ask her uh, to? Okay, sure. Ankita. Sure. Ankita. Hi. Can you speak? Would you like to speak? Uh, I'll write some questions. The parivadi le pangar ka matiye the. Especially sa high school students are already. Yamal da yam government college marpayin na na na. Apo high school ana yamal tutor apo. 
ഹരിസാറ് എൻകറേജ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് മാത്രമാണ് ഞാൻ എന്താ പറയാ എക്സാമിൽ ഈ ഇന്റർവ്യൂലൊക്കെ പങ്കെടുത്തത് അപ്പൊ സാറാണ് ഒരുപാട് ധൈര്യം തന്നത് സാറ് പറഞ്ഞ് എന്താ ഏതൊരു എക്സാമും നമ്മൾ അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്യണ എന്ന കാര്യത്തിലാണ് മെയിൻ ആയിട്ടുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞ് സാറ് നല്ല എൻകറേജ് തന്നു അതുകൊണ്ട് ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ ഞാൻ എന്റെ സിൻസിയർ താങ്ക്സ് ടു ഹരികൃഷ്ണൻ സാർ പിന്നെ ഒരുപാട് സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് പരിപാടിയിൽ പങ്കെടുക്കാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞതിൽ താങ്ക് യു ഹലോ താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു ഡോക്ടർ സിന്ധു ജോൺസ് ഫോർ കോർഡിനേറ്റിംഗ് ദ എസ് എ കോമ്പറ്റീഷൻ ആൻഡ് കൺഗ്രാചുലേഷൻസ് ടു ഓൾ ദ വിന്നേഴ്സ് നൗ വി ഹവ് കം ടു ദ കൺക്ലൂഷൻ ഓഫ് ടുഡേസ് പ്രോഗ്രാം ഐ വുഡ് ലൈക്ക് ടു ഇൻവൈറ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ വികാസ് എല്ലസ് ദ മോഡറേറ്റർ ഓഫ് ദിസ് വെബിനാർ ടു ഗിവ് ദ വോട്ട് ഓഫ് താങ്ക്സ് താങ്ക് യു വൺ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ വികാസ് ഓക്കെ താങ്ക് യു